This is the new Huawei Watch Fit 2. Out of all of the Huawei watches that were announced, this is probably the one with the biggest changes compared to its predecessor. Now, I'm not allowed to do any official testing on this watch yet, but in this video, I'll make some predictions on how well I expect the heart rate tracking, sleep tracking, and SpO2 measurements will perform based on some information I've gotten and my past experiences. However, given that this watch was just announced, let me first give you some background information on this new release from Huawei. But please be aware that the video footage in this video is from a pre-release version of this watch, and especially the software might still change quite a bit. Also, Huawei sent me this sample to look at, but this video is not sponsored in any way and all opinions are my own. Now the Huawei Watch Fit 2 is the successor to the original Watch Fit. Compared to the previous model, the screen size has increased significantly. The original Watch Fit had an AMOLED display of 1.64 inches, but this has now been increased to 1.74 inches. And though that doesn't sound like much, it is very noticeable. In my opinion, this added screen real estate does make it feel much more like a smartwatch instead of a smart band. The original watch fit always felt to me like a slightly beefier version of the Huawei Band 6, but this new model feels much more like a proper smartwatch. If you put the Huawei Band 6 or 7, watch fit and watch fit 2 side by side, you can clearly see the differences in screen sizes, especially if you pull up the main menus, you can see a clear difference in screen real estate. Part of the reason for the more densely packed menu on the new Watch Fit 2 is that the watch is supposed to have an improved chipset compared to the previous generation and especially compared to the lower end Huawei Band 7. One other major difference of the Watch Fit 2 compared to the Huawei Band 6 and 7 is that the Watch Fit 2 has built-in GPS, which means that if you go out running or cycling without a phone, you can still track your route. If you do go running without a phone, the Watch Fit 2 also allows you to sync your music from your phone to the watch, as well as connect your watch to Bluetooth earphones or use the speaker mode to play the songs. Of course, there are also various sports modes to choose from. And once these are activated, the watch will measure your heart rate every second. And this directly relates to one of the things I'm most excited about for this watch, the improved heart rate sensor. The heart rate sensors of the Watch Fit 2 will contain some of the same sensors that are also in the Huawei Watch GT3 series, which in my testing have shown the best heart rate results for Android, outperforming all other Android based watches so far. The original Watch Fit already performed quite well for some sports, and the Huawei Watch GT3 series does even better. So if the new Watch Fit 2 ends up somewhere in between, that would be great. Let me therefore provide you with an overview of how well the original Watch Fit and the new GT3 series performed compared to other smartwatches, so we can get a feeling for how well the Watch Fit 2 could perform. To evaluate that accuracy, I'll compare the heart rate measurements of different watches against the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which can generally record my heart rate very accurately. We'll start by looking at the easiest type of exercise for a watch to track, cycling indoors. An overview is displayed here for many of the watches I've tested over the last two years. I will use the correlation with the ECG chest strap as the metric, which is displayed along the horizontal axis, and I've also ordered the watches from worst to best along the vertical axis. So the further to the right and the higher a device is, the higher its correlation with the reference device, so the better its performance. And as you can see, the first generation watch fit marked here in green and several of the GT3 series of Huawei marked here in red are amongst the best heart rate trackers while cycling indoors. The Huawei Watch GT Runner, but also the Huawei Watch GT3 Pro on which I released the video today perform best, but they are closely followed by the original watch fit. And we can see that even better if we zoom into the area of the plot with the best heart rate trackers. As you can see, though the original watch fit is not quite as good as the new GT3 series, it's already doing quite well. Given that the new watch fit 2 has some of the same sensors that are also in the GT3 series, I would hope, based on the sensors used, that its performance is somewhere in between the performance of the GT3 Pro and the original watch fit. If that is indeed the case, that means it will be a good heart rate tracker for static cardio exercises. We can make a similar overview for weightlifting, which is generally one of the hardest exercises for a watch to track given the amount of tension on the arm and wrist. That overview is displayed here. And again, the further to the top right, the better a device is. 
Here I've marked the GT3 series in red and the original watch fit is marked in green. As you can see, the original watch fit was not very good at tracking my heart rate while weightlifting. However, the GT3 series is a lot better. So this is where I hope that the new sensor in the watch fit 2 brings the biggest improvement, hopefully getting the performance close to that of the GT3 series. Now, the watch fit 2 will also come with the Huawei True Sleep algorithm, which can track your sleep stages. I've evaluated this for many Huawei watches already, and they tend to perform similarly. To check if watches can track my sleep stages, I usually compare them to an EEG device called the Dream 2 that can actually measure my brain waves, and has been shown to be pretty reliable at sleep stage tracking. Here I show an overview of the sleep test results for many of the watches I've tested over the last years. Now for getting an overall impression of how well different watches perform, the Dream 2 should likely be good enough. However, the gold standard would be polysomnography, which I would like to try on many of these watches in the future. Now this graph shows an overview of the agreement of different watches with the EEG device. Along the horizontal axis we have the average agreement over the four individual sleep stages, that being light sleep, REM sleep, deep sleep and being awake. And on the vertical axis we have the agreement of the worst sleep stage. Now the better the agreement of the watches with the EEG device, the more to the top right they are. And as you can see, the best agreeing devices include different Fitbits, whoop straps and the Withing Sleep Analyzer. And here I've highlighted many of the Huawei watches I've tested in red and the original Huawei watch fit in green. As you can see, all of them are roughly in this same area of the plot and they tend to be more towards the bottom left than towards the top right, indicating that the true sleep algorithm usually doesn't perform that good, at least not on me. Given that the watch fit 2 comes with the same true sleep algorithm as many of the other watches I've previously tested, I do not expect the sleep tracking to be the main strength of this watch. However, these watches have generally been pretty good at tracking when I fall asleep and when I wake up, which is also a very useful sleep metric. We'll have to see though how good the watch fit 2 is at detecting my sleep stages and detecting when I fall asleep and wake up when I'm finally able to test it. I want to discuss a few more things in this video, but before getting to that first a quick side note. If everything goes according to plan, I'll be releasing my full review on the Huawei Band 7 this weekend. So if you're interested in seeing that or watching my full review on the Huawei Watch Fit 2, consider subscribing to this channel and liking this video, which would also make it easier for others to find it. Of course you would also make me really happy, but it's totally up to you. Now enough self-promotion, let's get back to the video. As I show in my review of the Huawei Watch GT3 Pro, the sensor Huawei includes in that watch is pretty good at tracking my oxygen saturation, so I hope and somewhat expect that the Watch Fit 2 will be just as good or at least close to it. The Watch Fit 2 also tries to estimate your stress levels, though I personally have some doubts about how useful and accurate such a feature is in any watch. Now the Watch Fit 2 should be released at the end of May or beginning of June, so I'll be able to do full testing then. The benefit of the Watch Fit 2 over for instance the GT3 series is that it's a relatively light watch at 26 grams and it also costs less, selling at 149 euros for the standard version. If you're interested in the full performance of the Huawei Watch GT3 Pro, I also released that video today and I'll link that up here. And after I've tested the Huawei Band 7, you can find that video right here. You can also find the recent reviews that I did on other Huawei watches right here. Now I hope this video provided you with some value, thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.